Hello and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana and in today's video we are going to be looking at motion in Adobe Fresco. It was just announced at Adobe Max this past week and I'm so excited to be sharing this new feature with all of you. So grab your tablet, your Apple Pencil, and let's jump right in. So to start, I've just got a current screen size document open on my tablet, and we're going to look at the bottom right hand corner. Located just above your drawing aids, you will now find the motion icon. Tap once and the timeline will automatically appear. With a fresh new layer, I'm going to be using my drawing aids to create a circle and fill it in with the fill tool. In Adobe Fresco, there are two different types of animation, frame by frame and path animation. Let's start with frame by frame. When I tap my frame once, the layer timeline menu will appear. From here, I have options to duplicate, copy, delete, or paste. For now, I'm going to hit duplicate and begin my animation by just starting to erase parts of this circle. I've just started erasing the circle on the second frame, but you can still see the full circle from the first frame. Under the settings, you'll see that you can toggle on onion skin, which allows you to preview frames that appear before and after the one that you're currently on. This makes it much easier to line up your animation shots. So with each new layer, I'm just duplicating and erasing over and over again. As you can see, I can scrub along my animation timeline using my Apple Pencil or my finger. All right, I think I'm satisfied with that. So let's simply hit the play all icon to watch a playback of our animation. That was nice, but what if I want the animation to play over and over? Then that's where we go back to settings to look at our playback. Tap once and select loop. This will repeat our animation continuously. You can also have your animation play in a boomerang. This is similar to looping, except you have your animation play from the beginning to the end and then in reverse back and forth. Well, what about speed? You can simply adjust the frames per second to make your animation go faster or slower. The higher the number of the frames, the faster your animation will play. Let's try a frame speed of around nine. A bonus tip. Now that we've incorporated motion to this first layer, you'll notice a small badge that you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the layer. This is your way for easily identifying which of your layers in your document have motion enabled. Every time you add a new layer, you create a new timeline. This is a great way to create separate and dynamic animations all within the same document. Next, let's take a look at path animation. So let's say that I want this yellow shape to travel around my circle. Tap path and draw your path on your canvas. As soon as I drew my path, a secondary layer properties menu appeared. These are the effects that we can apply to this path animation that I just drew. Use the add multiple slider to increase the number of objects, play with the frames to make it faster or slower, and just use this panel as a way of exploring and having fun with your path animation. If you don't like the path that you drew for whatever reason, you can just tap that X and it'll delete automatically. A bonus tip, as many paths as you draw on this layer, your settings will carry over to those new paths as well so I can draw multiple paths all over my canvas and the objects will multiply and move in the same way along the path 
as long as my settings are on the same layer. Let's make an edit. I'm going to just change the scale, rotate, and add a blue watercolor mark to it. Once I hit play all, those same paths reappear and the edits that I made to my object carry over. I'm going to show you how you can incorporate both frame by frame and path animation on the same layer. Let's take a look. First, I'm going to start with my drawing aid again to create another shape. I'm just going to use the same principles from before, but this time I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit. I want the shape to gradually scale down instead of slowly disappear. So I just duplicate and scale it down slightly each time and repeat that process until I'm done. As I scrub along my animation timeline, I can see that this effect has pretty much worked and is looking pretty good. Now, what I need to do is draw my path. So, I select path from my timeline, I draw my path, and I can see this shape go frame by frame and also travel down the path that I've drawn. Cool, right? Here it'll be easier to see the ease in out feature that is under the layer properties menu. As the shape travels along the path, it starts slowly and then gradually speeds up and then finally slows down again. This is just a cool feature that you can choose to toggle on if you kind of like that gradual pace of speed along your path. As you can see, I've had a lot of fun, but now it's time to save our work. Let's select Publish and Export, and you will see a section at the bottom called Motion. There, you can export your animation to MP4, GIF, or PNG file formats. All right, everyone, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel for weekly videos. Leave me a comment with any questions. I'm so excited to see the community growing. Thank you so much for your support. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Bye.